Welcome to the Farside channel. This is our series of business owner interviews where we chat to business owners about the challenges they have faced in building their businesses. Today, I am joined by the amazing Tando of Evolve. Tando, tell us about yourself and what your business does. Hi there, Tamron. Thank you so much for having me, for having us, and for the opportunity to showcase uh, evolving and the work that we that we do. Um, so we are a data analytic talent firm. So our focus is very much on decision sciences resourcing. Uh, we help our clients across the financial services landscape, um, as well as other industries, to resource as well as build and manage their recruitment pipelines. Um, from a candid perspective, we basically help individuals navigate their career journeys, um, help them make decisions um, that ensure that they're elevating and taking their careers to the next level. By way of background, though, interestingly enough, I'm an economist by background. Um, I spent a number of years in the in the banking space, focusing on strategy and operations before moving uh, into the world of entrepreneurship back in 2015. Sure, that's quite an interesting transition. It it was rather, but funnily enough, I think I always knew uh, somewhere deep down that I was I was going to take the entrepreneurial route at some point. Um, sometimes I often joke that I might have overstayed my welcome in corporate, <laughs> but um, it was certainly a necessary time uh, in my life. And the the, the lessons that, that I learned there and the networks, of course, that I built um, have continued to 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 carry me through uh, kind of this stage of my journey as an entrepreneur. That's awesome. Yeah, networking is important. Hey, I think we we it's one of the things that I didn't realize how how important it is when building a business. And it's not just it's not just about uh, being able to get clients. It's about having that support group of people around you Absolutely. who've been there before and they Absolutely. know things you don't know. And yeah, it's uh, Absolutely. I cannot stress enough the power of mentorship and surrounding yourself with with people who can help you navigate the the journey and and you know it's funny when we talk about the journey we, we think of it only in terms of um kind of building making money etc but the emotional transition the mental transition uh, psychologically the things that you need to gear up for um just as an individual um on a personal level as well as in terms of the business it really helps to to have some like-minded people to bounce ideas off and just help it you really think does. Through, uh, some of the things that you're trying to do it really does. That's interesting you say that because I know um, it's it's something that I I learned the hard way was that being good at something like accounting is not the same thing as being good at running an accounting business. Absolutely. It's a whole different thing. So yes, having people who can help you through this idea that you're now a business owner. Now, you know, the risk lies with you. The responsibility lies with you. The, the Everything. You are, Everything. Yeah, you're, you're you the are lady. every division in the business. <laughs> yeah, you're the tea lady, the janitor, the salesperson, operations. You are everything. And you've suddenly got to know all this stuff and, and just, be good at it which obviously we can't do so it's really really great to have have that network and and what what so what is how to say this how what made you pick this business what drove you here well that's an interesting story I think it's um a, a number of things really the first was I've always kind of been interested in the defining moments in, in people's career journeys. So from the time that you're, um, think of it in school as just choosing your subjects um, or when you get to varsity and you just kind of choose what path you want to take. Um, and when you're working, um, you know, how you begin to kind of decide on um, and define the space that you want to be in um, and the career that you want to that you want to follow and then of course as you grow in that career become a specialist or become a manager how you actually transition to managing others so I think for me what I define that as um, is your defining moments within your career trajectory and funnily enough for me as I was a kind of exiting corporate, um, I had an experience that really just opened my eyes to how much people need support around these defining moments. So both in terms of tools that you can use and access um, that help you kind of grow as an individual, um, but also I became very interested in company culture and how to actually embed culture within an organization and actually kind of gearing up 
for success as an organization um, and as a team. And that's what really pushed me towards um, the recruitment space. I, I must admit that I had never considered myself someone who'd ever do uh, recruitment, <laughs> really. Um, but it has been, it's been amazing and it really helped me to kind of um, join the dots, put the dots together in my mind. Um, and then also, of course, change people's lives in the process, which is, which is always amazing. Yes, yeah, that is, it, it does make a, a big difference to your day when you know that you, you help someone, hey, it's, it's exactly, exactly, so much better than just making a sale. Uh, that's right, that's right. That's and awesome. I think that's the, that's the power in, in what we do. It's very much a human to human business. Um, it's not just about crunching the numbers, making the deals. It's building relationships with clients as well as building relationships with candidates and actually understanding what makes an individual tick um, or what uh, addition would really be great for a specific team. Um, yeah. and, and what they need from a character fit, from a culture fit, from, a, of, of course, from a technical, I mean, almost goes without saying, um, but there's so many more uh, elements to it. Um, and so, yeah, we really enjoy, enjoy what we do. I think it's, it's you, you've highlighted actually an important part of, of building a team that people often miss when they're looking for a candidate. It, so many, so many employers, I mean, I know even myself, when I started uh, hiring or even before I started hiring, when I was busy outsourcing and it's because it's the same, same process when you're looking for someone to solve an issue for you mm. is you look for someone with a technical skill and we forget that that's not enough. The technical skill is important, but that person must fit within your organization. Even if you're outsourcing, that Absolutely. person must share your values and your and your ways of doing things, your your feelings towards what it is you are doing, what you are building must, must be shared. And so, I think sometimes yeah. we don't take into account the life stage of a business, right? I mean, when you're starting out um, and you're still very much in those early stages, you almost need people who are strong at dealing with unstructured environments, people who can kind of pick up the pieces and, and don't necessarily need to be ticking the box on a specific job spec. Um, you know, yes. they think outside yes. the box and they're ready to kind of lend themselves in whatever way they need to. Whereas when you've got a more mature um, organization and you kind of pretty much set in your ways in terms of, um, you know, your values, your mission, what you stand for, what you do, then you need people who are growers. You need people who are going to take that existing kind of vision um, and actually run with it. You know what I mean? And, and, and then it, I think it's also something we don't take into consideration, the life stage of, of a business or the life stage of a team even um and what different dynamics actually come into play that is so true that is i mean because that is it's not just for teams hey it's every every stage of your business things change Absolutely. um you know your your vision can change your purpose can it, it change can. Your, it can your core <laughs> service can change you know uh, overnight. you you've hit that especially for us uh, in, in the <laughs> really? stage that we're at and, and probably coming out of evolving i think one of the things uh, we spoke about the other day was we were wondering what you know the biggest kind of business building challenge that that we um, are facing at the moment and and that is the fact that the world is constantly changing i mean coming out of covid i think we're all very much aware of how what worked yesterday might not necessarily work today. And so for us right now, we're at a point um, as an organization as evolving where we're asking, how do we uh, diversify? How do we start to look at evolve. different way? Yeah, in terms of, yeah, how do we evolve? Exactly, how are we true to our name um, and actually um, kind of, you know, change the way we do things, add more value to our clients, add more people, to, uh, add more value to the people that we're engaging with. And it's quite funny because that very line of questioning has brought us back to our why. Because sometimes your why can work at a certain point in your, mm -hmm. in your journey, but then later on, you need to almost revisit it because circumstances around have changed, right? Um, and the, the, the demands of your market might even change. And so your why becomes something that you constantly need to revisit. And I think that's what we're finding in terms of our, our journey. Um, so that, that has been um, really interesting. We don't yet have all the answers, I must say, but it's been an incredible journey. Um, just going through this, I'm a, yeah. 
That is so true. I was just, I was actually thinking about it the other day because I, when I teach about why and purpose um, on in the business builder, I did a, a whole thing on it. And I, I, you know, I talk about how you find your why and then you use your why to build things. And then after I'd done the whole training, I thought, I, I don't know if I, I actually mentioned the fact that your why changes. <laughs> your purpose changes. You know, that is because when you're starting the business, it's okay for your purpose to simply be, I want to feed my kids or I want to put them through school or I just need a job uh, and mm-hmm. I'm building my own. That, that you know, when you started, that's probably your why, that's your purpose. But as you grow and you, you mature, you go, okay, I've achieved that. Um, and maybe you're happy there and you'll stay there, but maybe you're like, but actually now, now let's, let's see what, what difference can we make? You know, now my purpose might be, how can I help my clients feed their kids? How can I help my clients put their kids through school? You know, and, and then you grow bigger and you go, well, maybe, maybe I can, I can start a, well, foundation. We started that the other day, um, educational thing where I'm like, where we can help other people study oh, and, and yeah. go through through school yeah. and stuff like that so and, it's so and funny it's things... almost like Maslow's hierarchy of needs you know you kind of sort uh, you solve for the basic stuff initially um kind yeah. of your foundation element your basic needs um but then it becomes more aspirational over time um mm. and once you're it's, it's one of those things where once your cup is full you can pour into others you know exactly, um yeah. that kind of that kind of concept i think the, the very same could be said for businesses um once you've kind of ticked some of the initial boxes that you might have you can start to think bigger um and you can start to ask yourself harder or more critical questions about you know what is the value you're really bringing to the table um yeah. and and yeah that that it, it's so it's yeah it's an amazing thing it's amazing it's, thing. It's a- such an exciting journey hey uh, you know Look, funny, it, I it's overwhelming and exciting <laughs> but it's certainly and it's certainly not for the faint-hearted <laughs> no, I spoke to someone the other day and they said uh forget self-help books if you want to grow as a person if you want to be more than you are open a business oh yeah oh uh, yes and push you and teach you and test. way more about yourself absolutely absolutely it's an incredibly it, it's actually it's a character building um journey the, this road of entrepreneurship um it's funny because it reminds me of one of my favorite speakers Jim Ron. I, I love uh you know his content and and some of the, He's the amazing. you'll often find yeah no he really is one of my favorites and the one that always stands out for me um is where he speaks about if you if you work on your goals, your goals will work on you. Um, if you work on your plan, your plans will go to work on you. So basically he's saying whatever good things that you build end up building us. So whether it's a build business or whether it's a, you know something even in your personal life, as you go on the journey of creating that thing, there is so much value that that thing is actually adding to your life. And it's creating you know, a different person. It's giving you different perspective. It's giving you different skill sets. It's giving, it's just, yeah, it it really, yeah, it's growth. (laughs) It's amazing though. So um, tell me, Sandro, in this this growth, in this journey, what do Mm. you feel has been the biggest challenge that you managed to solve? Um. So, you know, we've done, a, we've done a lot over the, the last couple of years in terms of, of solving for different challenges. But interestingly enough, I do feel that the space we're in now is probably one where once we're past it, I'll be proudest of myself. So oh, awesome. <laughs> it would have been the biggest challenge that we've solved in, in terms of that diversification and actually monetizing um, and being able to commercialize some of the things that we're looking to do now as we diversify. Um, there's a lot internally that I think is important that we've been able to do. And that, for example, um, onboarding processes and bringing people into the space and embedding our culture, embedding the values and, and kind of the goals and our approaches to how we do things. So we've got that evolving way um, embedded. And I think that was that was important because at the end of the day, it's not just me who's facing our clients or who's fa- dealing with our candidates. Everyone within the business is a touch point, right? Um, and it was important for me for us to have that kind of consistent feel and approach, not because we're the same people, but just so 
anyone who's engaging with us will kind of walk away feeling like, okay, I've been touched by evolving today. You know, it's a, it, 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 it's a, it's a different kind of feeling. So that was important and going on that journey and being able to create um, our full end-to-end -end onboarding program, what was important. That was, that was something I think was, was something we managed to solve for quite well. Um, but That's now, amazing, of course, as yeah. I say, that diversification part, uh, that is, <laughs> that's where everything's at right now. And, and maybe if we have this call in a year, Tom, I'll be telling you some good news. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Tell me what would if if someone else watching is also facing this idea of trying to get that unified uh, value, that unified face that when we, you know the I've been touched by evolving today. You want that culture, that company culture that is just pervasive. What tip would you give them? What 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 would you say? Focus on this. If you get this right, you're going to get that company culture right? So as a leader, um, I would say it starts with you. If you, like in anything, um, you know, when you're trying to lead people, people don't want to be told, they, they want to be shown. Um, you know, you can't speak one thing, but then live another. Um, mm -hmm. For me, the, the thing that you must cotton on to is kind of what experience do you want people to have when they engage with you? Um, and how do you do that? So you you might have you may, might have a top three things that you either do, um, be it how you communicate, uh, you know, in written form or verbally or whatever it might be. Um, but you've got a couple of things that you do well, and then teach those things deliberately. A lot of the time we think. Um, in fact, a couple of years ago, I wrote an article: teach deliberately that which you do instinctively. Because sometimes we think those things that we you know, that come na almost naturally to us, even though one day they weren't that natural, you know, <laughs> they became more natural over time with practice. But a lot of the time we get to a point where we think, you know, things come so naturally to us, it's almost instinctive. Um, and we assume that the next person coming in will be able to do that exact thing. You've yes, got to yes. be deliberate about your teaching. You've got to be deliberate about passing on knowledge. Um, and I think the more deliberate you are around it, the more um, you will be able to bring people on the journey that you're going on, bring people into the vision, bring people into the ethos um, for the organization. Yeah, That is excellent advice. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't have even thought of saying it that way, but that is exactly something I faced in building my team is, uh, you know, I'm an accountant and accounting has got these internationally accepted ways of doing things you've got mm. the you know they're literally called the generally accepted accounting principles and mm. so you hire a bookkeeper or you hire an accountant and you assume that they're gonna they're gonna do things the same way you do because <laughs> it's this international standard but an international standard doesn't mean that their exact way of doing things they're going to get to the same result but that doesn't mean they're going to handle the client the same way. It doesn't mean Absolutely. they're going to handle your paperwork the same way mm, or that you're, mm. they're going to think of letting you know how far they are when, when they're halfway through or, you know, whatever that, you know, that you've just got this assumption that, you know, oh, you know, I'm an engineer, I hire an engineer will work the same way. It, it, no. Mm. You know, it's funny how the things, the examples that you've given there are all the kind of soft elements. Um, yeah. So how a person manages expectations or keeps you in the know or how they, um, you know, kind of communicate and, and, and all of that. Um, a lot of the time, the technical stuff is on paper, right? I mean, you see, we see it in our space with the job spec. The, you know, that's only one part of the job, <laughs> the spec and the technical information. All yeah. that soft, uh, uh, softer, and in fact, they should actually be called hard metrics because they're so, so important. Um, but all those things are the things we need to be so conscious and deliberate about teaching, um, verbalizing, um, making sure that they're heard within the organization, because those are the things that can make such a difference in the engagement um, that your clients or, or, or you know, um, that, that your stakeholders will have with you. Yes, yes, so important. So I know you're working on all sorts of new things. Is there anything that you can actually tell me about or <laughs> is it all hush-hush until launch? It's hush-hush for now. Um, <laughs> it is hush-hush for now, um, but it's going to be very exciting. Um, that, that, that I must say. Um, I, it's, it's certainly been an exciting process just working through it, but a bit hush-hush for now. <laughs> awesome. No, that's fine. Then we're going to have to book you again in a couple of months' time. You tell us 
everything that's launched and how well it's gone. That'll be so exciting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alessandro, I know you're on LinkedIn and you're on Facebook and you're on Instagram. You've got a website and I'm going to put all of those links underneath this video. But Thank if someone you. wants to, to reach out to you personally and, and either just be part of your network or actually talk to you about their recruitment needs, what is the best way to contact you? <laughs> I would say uh, LinkedIn or over email. So on LinkedIn, Chando and Jinga, um, and then over email, it's tenacious at evolving.co.za. Um, in our organization, you. maybe just context around tenacious because people like to think my name might be tenacious and it isn't. <laughs> I don't have to tell you, since I've known you, I have loved your email address. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so maybe just to, to give context for those that don't know, um, we have a um, principle in our business that we our email address must be reflective of the person that you are um, or, you know, the journey that you're, that you're on, who you're trying to be. Um, and so the question was asked, what did I think of myself? And funnily enough, I didn't actually come up with it. I, actually, I had to ask someone, how would they best describe Describe me in one word. And funnily enough, when Tenacious came up, I, it, it, it couldn't have resonated with me more. Um, and so that's how I landed up with Tenacious. <laughs> oh, I love it. I think it's so awesome. The Tenacious um, one. <laughs> that's very cool. Funny you say that uh, we, we have in the in the builder, and actually I think um, in one of the prior interviews, I spoke to a lady called Linda Dent, who also, by the way, was in banking before she she went into her own own business, but she went into business uh, coaching. Okay. And one of the things she does with people is she says, ask your friends and family to describe you. Ask your friends and family to tell you who you are to them, because mm -hmm. it when you hear these things that people say, it 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 bolsters your self-confidence because we, you know, we always, we, I think every single business owner walks around with this imposter syndrome of I shouldn't oh, be here. Oh, I shouldn't absolutely. be here. I mean, what am I doing? I don't deserve you know? this. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And then you ask someone to describe you and they say tenacious and you're like, yes. <laughs> really? <Yes. laughs> First you're like, really? <laughs> and then you're like, yes, I'll earn it. <laughs> um yeah no no that's so so true I mean they say they say that you know if you if you ask people one as you say um how they describe you but also the things that they compliment you on the most mm -hmm. um like if you constantly find people are saying you know you're really good at you know xyz speaking whatever it might be that is very likely to be your calling because I mean God puts plants these gifts in us almost like seeds, you know, they're there, they're in books about whether we're going to water it and actually nurture whatever talents we've been given, but it's there um, already. So, yeah. Love it. I love it. So my last question to you before we end sure. is what piece of advice would you give the young Tando starting out on her business journey? What would do you wish you had known before you started? Oh, wow. <laughs> See, there, there is so much. <laughs> There's so much. But I think, um, I think especially in the context of the difficult years that, we, that we've just had um, in terms of COVID, um, you know, looting, rioting, um, et cetera, um, it's, been a, it's been a difficult period. Um, especially and especially more so challenging for, for any uh, business owner. And I think something I probably would tell my younger self or want to impress upon myself um, is, is definitely the idea that this too shall pass um, and that nothing lasts forever. Um, and I think because, you know, you talked about imposter syndrome just a moment ago, that usually does creep up when things around you are falling apart, disastrous, um, you know, it hardly ever happens when things are going great, right? Um, so I think it, it's really twofold, this idea of nothing lasts forever. On the negative side, mm -hmm. you know, kind of keep your chin up, keep focused because you're going to make it. Um, keep focused on kind of planting the seeds every day. Keep focused on doing what you need to do and being consistent from your side and things will, you know, kind of uh, pass and, and, and it won't be that, that kind of difficult period won't be permanent. But on the flip side, even the good times, those two shall pass. So one should always be planning for... Yeah when it won't be so great and it's funny it's so difficult as an entrepreneur you always kind of, you want to kind of look out um you know you might do forecasting or however it is whether it's a very formalized approach or informal but most of the time you almost plan for the upside 
you plan for, deals happening, sales being made, people, you know, mm-hmm. buying into your product or whatever. Very rarely do we plan for the downside. Um, and I think that's a very, very important part of being an entrepreneur. The realities mm-hmm. of that is not always going to be kind of up and up and up, to put it simplistically. Um, there will be those downtimes and it's about what are you doing to either mitigate or what are you doing to create buffers um, so, in, yeah. in the situation. So, so yeah, I think, I think that's the thing, that this too shall pass. So keeping that, that constant, um, you know, that just, just keeping that, that focus going so that your energy levels also don't fluctuate, right? Because I think the yeah. challenge with either being stuck in, you know, what the emotion is, is you'll go up and down with it right? Mm. Um, and, you know, when things are good, then you're high, you know, when things are bad, then you're suddenly all depressed and, and, and gloomy. Um, and that's difficult to avoid, but it's so important um, to kind of try and keep your emotions steady, irrespective of what's happening around you. Not easier said than done, but it's definitely <laughs> so important in this world. That is excellent yeah, advice. I think that's what I'd so- tell myself. <laughs> I, I wish you could go back and, and tell yourself, but I'm sure anyone watching, I hope they take it to heart because that is amazing advice. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today, Tando. I really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you. Um, it's always a pleasure engaging with you. Thanks, Tamron. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to speaking to you in a couple of months time and finding out all about all these new things you're launching and how well <laughs> they went. Absolutely. Thank you so much.